Hello, Year 7. Uh, slight change of um, a pace today with the poem. This is a poem written in the 1950s, the early 1950s, not too long after the end of the Second World War. Um, we'll come to that in a minute. Um, your do now, though, is probably what I think is the best line from the poem. This boy, Timothy Winters, is described as having ears like bombs and teeth like splinters. So I want you to draw a picture of his face. Look, I've done a little one there for you. Uh, let's see what you can come up with. So our learning objective today is to read and anal analyse Timothy Winters by Charles Causley. Uh, and the title, therefore, is Timothy Winters by Charles Causley. Right, here is a glossary of words. That means it's a list of words that you might not know. Uh, well, you probably won't know because some of these words come from way back. Football balls uh, were something that were around before the lottery, but they fulfilled the same purpose. People would guess how many goals were going to be scored on Saturday in, in all the football matches combined, I think. And then uh, and you would win lots of money if you got it right. Um, but basically think of it as being like the lottery. The Blitz was when the Germans uh, bombed England, more specifically London, the East End of London during the Second World War. Um, for six weeks, they just came over and dropped uh, millions of tons of bombs on the east end of London, specifically and the rest of London, uh, unrelentingly. Britches are, tr britches are just trousers. The welfare state is where you go nowadays. Um, it's called social security. It's where you go if you uh, lose your job and you can't afford to feed your children or whatever. Uh, a bombardier is a soldier. An aspirin is a painkiller medicine. And hells are Cornish word for the sound of a cow crying in alarm. And amen, you probably know that one, but it literally means it is so. And we're going to go through each stanza of the poem. And by now, you know, the stanzas is like the, like the verses. And then ask, after each stanza, answer this question. What does this stanza tell us about Timothy? Timothy Winters comes to school with, wise, with, with eyes as wide as a football pool. Ear, ears like bombs and teeth like splinters, a blitz of a boy's Timothy Winters. So what does this stanza tell us about Timothy? A blitz of a boy? We know that the blitz is when the Germans aerial bombed um, London, as we said on the previous slide. So we could, we could argue, and I think successfully, that uh, Timothy Winters is a sort of product of that time you know he was if he's at school in the 1950s he would have been uh, like a baby during the blitz so he's to some degree traumatized by what's gone on um, with you know in his life in his, in his in his short life so far a blitz of a boy that is a metaphor of course and why do you think he's called him a blitz of a boy well we've just covered that haven't we so annotate your poem and move on to the next slide his belly is white his neck is dark and his hair is an exclamation mark his clothes are enough to scare a crow, and through his breeches the blue winds blow. What does this tell us about the uh, tell the reader about Timothy, and why uh, that adjective blue? Have a think about that and annotate your poem. When teacher talks, he won't hear a word, and he shoots down dead the arithmetic bird. He licks the pattern off his plate and he's not even heard of the welfare state. So what does this tell us about Timothy? Well, he's, um, you know, there's the metaphor, first of all, there. And he shoots down dead the arithmetic bird. In other words, he's a troublesome child in the class, isn't he? He's probably making lots of noise and full of traumatised energy and definitely not learning anything. He licks the pattern off his plate because he's so hungry. He's not even heard of the welfare state. So this the welfare state was brand new in the 1950s but so it didn't reach a lot of people like it uh, does now so he's um, we're getting the idea that this boy lives in uh, extreme poverty Timothy Winters has bloody feet and he lives in a house on Suez Street he sleeps in a sack on the kitchen floor and they say there aren't boys like him anymore well who's they who are they that say that they're going to be the people in newspapers or politicians who say you know, the war's over, we've, we're rebuilding the country, there aren't boys living in this type of poverty anymore, the welfare state will look after them. Um, but this poem's telling us that that's not the case. This boy, to use a, to coin a modern phrase, he's fallen through the net, hasn't he? He's, uh, there's no support around him at all. He, him and his family are clearly traumatised by the Blitz, and uh, they're living in this kind of 
horrible house where he sleeps on the floor in a on a kitchen sack, probably got not got any light or heating. And here's his dad look, old man's winters, likes his beer, and his missus ran off with a bombardier. Grandma sits in the grate with a gin, and Timothy's dosed with an aspirin. So his dad's getting drunk every night, his grandma's sitting there sipping uh, gin in this, you know, you can't blame him, it sounds incredibly grim, and they give him an aspirin, which is a, uh, like a headache pill, but it might calm him down a bit, I suppose. The welfare worker lies awake, but the law's as tricky as a ten-foot snake. So Timothy Winters drinks his cup and slowly goes on growing up. Welfare worker is somewhere uh, what would now probably be called a social worker who would um, have been allocated to try and sort Timothy Winters out before he grows up and becomes a, you know, a serious problem, which he will do if he's got no education and he's traumatised. Um, but the law's as tricky as a ten-foot snake. That's a simile. Uh, what does it tell us about the welfare worker's job? It tells us that it's very, it's a very hard job to do, isn't it? You know, to uh, get through to this family and get um, somehow get this boy into a, into a better position. Um, but he's growing up all the time. You know, he's getting bigger all the time, and consequently, uh, you know, potentially more troublesome for himself and everybody else. At morning prayers, the master howls for children less fortunate than ourselves, and the loudest response in the room is when Timothy Winters roars, "Amen." What does this tell us about Timothy? That verb is an on, this verb roars is an onomatopoeia. What does it tell us about Timothy? That he roars amen. With his hair like what is it? Teeth like splinters and ears like bombs. This is um you know uh, uh, an unhappy child I think, an angry one. So come one angel, come on ten, Timothy Winters says Amen, 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 Amen. Timothy Winters, Lord, Amen. This is repetition. Why has the, why has the uh, poet repeated Timothy Winters saying Amen five times, do you think? And then the last half of Amen, which is kind of for Timothy Winters, isn't it really? Isn't it really? There is a different meaning behind this last Amen. How does it change the whole poem? Is this still a poem? Some interesting questions for you to answer there. Now we discussed earlier on that this is a poem, it's a didactic poem, it's a poem that um, wants to tell you something very specifically. Do you think that Timothy Think Winters is just one boy? Do you think it's based on uh, just one boy? Or, is, or could it be based on a whole generation of boys who uh, were very young through the Blitz? Um, I mean, I'm guessing he's about 11 or 12 now, so the war, so if it's 19, yeah, he would have been like a small child through the Blitz. So do you think that Timothy Winters is one boy? When do you think Timothy Winters was alive? Well, we know that, don't we? Victorian times in 1800s. First World War, 1914. But in fact, as we've already said, he's a child in the 1950s after the Second World War. Why is it important for the reader to know this, do you think? Just write a little response to that. Now you're going to write a, uh, an analytical paragraph, which is essentially a peel paragraph. And this is the thing that I want you to uh, put onto class charts for me to have a look at. Um, a blitz of a boy is Timothy Winters is the uh, quote that I've taken. So the writer uses a metaphor in the line of blitz of a boy, present Tim Timothy Winters looking like a mess. The word blitz is connected with bombing in the war. It suggests to the reader that everything about Timothy is broken and a mess, like a blob has exploded and he's been caught up in it. So I want you to pick... Uh, another quotation from the poem, do an analysis like that, of about that length, and uh, put it onto class charts and I'll have a look at it and reward you with achievement points as usual. So well done Year 7, fantastic work, I'll speak to you tomorrow.